Welcome to How to Play Ambient Guitar Episode 5. On today's video, we're going to see how to set up a uh, distorted guitar tone. And then we're going to look at some ways to practice using that distorted guitar tone. Let's get right to work. The first thing you're going to want to do is set up a good, clean tone. So let me, show, let, me uh, let you hear my tone. You can pretty much use any kind of amp, or if you've got an amp modeler like I do, whatever your preference is, maybe it's a Fender style, Marshall style, Vox, you know, whatever, uh, you know, whatever you prefer. I would set up a clean tone with possibly just a little bit of grit. You can hear there's, there's just a little bit of dirt in there. Okay, the next thing you'll uh, want to think about is a compressor. I've got my Wampler Ego compressor set to a, a pretty low level of compression, just enough to squeeze the sound a little bit and give me a little bit more sustain. So let me, uh, here, here's what it sounds like. So you can hear that the compressor is squishing the sound. Next in line would be a distortion pedal. Again, you can use pretty much whatever distortion you have. I would just give a couple of caveats. The scooped mids, kind of more metally type of distortion pedal, may not be as effective for lead playing because it does de-emphasize the mids. Uh, the mid-range of your tone, and that's actually where a lot of definition comes for uh, single string playing. Um, what I've got down on the floor here is a radial tone bone. I selected that uh, distortion pedal for this video because it's got a wide tonal range. Um, let, me, uh, let me go ahead and engage it let, and just listen to the basic tone, and then I'll tell you about how I got it. If you've got a full-on Marshall amp, you may be able to get a tone similar to this just from the amp. So it's a fairly amp-like kind of um, overdrive. And the way I've got the tone bone set up is uh, the tone bone has a top end switch. So you can think about it as kind of the treble section. It's actually set to a dark mode to de-emphasize the treble. And then I've balanced it out a little bit, but it's not a real trebly sound. There's a little bit of, you know, you can hear the definition, but it's not uber trebly. The other thing the Tone Bone has is a very flexible mid-range uh, section. So what I've done is actually bump up the mid-range quite a bit. So it's pretty mid-rangey sounding. Okay, again, I do that because I feel that I get better definition in single string playing. And then in terms of the low end, it's about in the mid on the tone bone. You want to watch it. Don't get it too bassy again. That will lose definition. I do have a fair amount of gain dialed in. But again, this is more of an amp-like uh, distortion. And if I roll off the volume control, it does clean up. Now, your distortion pedal may react a little bit differently, but you'll need to kind of figure out where you like the distortion level for what you're going to be playing. All right, if we add in the Wampler, the compressor, you'll hear that the sustain level kind of goes up. Okay, so it's just a little bit of compression. Don't go overboard, but just kind of compress it a little bit to even out your tone. The next thing I want to just mention is for me, I, for lead playing, I actually turn the tone knob on this guitar almost all the way off. I'll typically run it at about two, and that would be uh, for both the uh, bridge pickup. <laughs> and sometimes the bridge and the neck pick up together. 
Okay. Uh, again, you, your guitar is going to vary wi wildly or widely. Maybe you have a Telecaster or a Stratocaster, very, very different from this guitar with two humbuckers. But I would encourage you to play around with the tone knob and don't be afraid to turn it down. That's going to roll off the top end and again, uh, give you a nice definition to the string by reducing some of the overtones in the string sound itself. All right, so next thing you'll need is a volume pedal. Um, if you've been following this series, you'll know that the volume pedal is a core element of the ambient guitar setup. I'm using a Morley Little Alligator. What you'll see next in my signal chain is a Ditto Looper. I'll be using that in a few minutes, so we'll get to that. And finally, a delay. As I've used in all the other videos in this series, um, I've got a Strymon Dig on the floor and I've got it set to about a, a one second delay or so. The Strymon does have the two delay lines, totally optional if you want to run two, two delays or something like that. But I do have a little bit of a, um, a dotted eighth thing going. Uh, let me engage the delay and you can hear what it sounds like clean. <laughs> And I do have a fair amount of uh, repeats, so it does delay quite a bit. All right, so that's the basic, those are the basic components for the sound. Let me put it all together and let's hear what it sounds like. I'm gonna be using the volume pedal again to kind of chop off the attack of the string. I'm gonna start on the bridge pickup with the tone on tone control on about two. So here we go. All right, the alternate tone that I use is both the bridge and the neck pickups, and I do many times roll the tone all the way off. So let's listen to that. It's interesting, on this guitar, and again, it may vary depending on your guitar, when I've got the tone control rolled all the way down and both pickups on, I actually get more high-end, uh, more higher-order overtones to the sound kind of cranking through that distortion. I think it's really interesting, and it's very mid-rangey. I actually think of it as kind of a mid-range honk, if you will. I like it a lot. So I, you'll, if you listen to much of my music, you'll hear it kind of all over the place in the lead tones. All right, so that's the lead tone. Let me play it just a little bit, just a little bit more. Okay, great. So I've got my tone, but how am I going to practice? Well, that's what the ditto, the looper, is for. Um, I've found a, a way that I really like to practice is use a looper or maybe on my recording software set up a loop of something very simple and just kind of jam to it. I, I get a lot of ideas that way. So let me go ahead and do that and let's kind of... Let me knock that out here, okay. And uh, let me go ahead and set up a loop and I'll start playing to it. And you'll kind of hopefully hear what I mean.
can, <laughs> I can do that for like a long time. You know, kind of get your head in a place and just kind of go with it. I really recommend, though, something like that to just work up some ideas. One of the things you may have heard me doing is not playing a lot of notes right next to each other. And this kind of is in keeping with um, episode four of How to Play Ambient Guitar, where I mentioned in clean lead playing, it's kind of interesting to use wider intervals. So again, you know... Okay, sorry about that, but you, you get the picture. So I'm using octaves, fifths, ninths, wider intervals mixed in with notes that are right next to each other, more scalar types of elements. And again, I think that helps, can be very helpful in providing space in what you're playing. We've got a lot of delay going on, a lot of reverb. Things can get really muddy if we're not careful. Well, there you have it. One of my ways to set up for ambient guitar leads, distorted leads, and then a way to practice and have fun with that lead guitar tone. If you haven't already done so, go ahead and subscribe to my channel so that you can be notified when more episodes of How to Play Ambient Guitar post. Also, uh, what I'll do in regards to this episode is post a link in the video description below where you can download an ambient guitar drone that you can practice your ambient guitar leads to. And I'll also include a section where I'm playing some lead guitar over top of the drone just so you can kind of get a feel for what I was thinking when I put that drone together. As always, see all of you on the next video.